decades have been a decade of breakthroughs and developments in medicine and psychiatry. Scientists have developed a new technology to cure mentally ill adults. With the use of electro shocks, the minds of sick patients are being wiped clean, giving them a fresh start. On this blank slate, physicians then imprint a new, healthy personality. Remaking people, shocking them into obedience. This is a story about that powerful idea. In the 1950s, it caught the attention of the CIA. The agency funded a series of experiments. Out of them was produced a secret handbook on how to break down prisoners. The key was using shock to reduce adults to a childlike state. It's a fundamental hypothesis of this handbook that these techniques are in essence methods of inducing regression of the personality. There is an interval, which may be extremely brief, of suspended animation, a kind of psychological shock or paralysis. Experienced interrogators recognize this effect when it appears and know that at this moment the source is far more open to suggestion, far likelier to comply than he was just before he experienced the shock. But these techniques don't only work on individuals, they can work on whole societies. A collective trauma, a war, a coup, a natural disaster, a terrorist attack puts us all into a state of shock. And in the aftermath, like the prisoner in the interrogation chamber, we too become childlike, more inclined to follow leaders who claim to protect us. One person who understood this phenomenon early on was the most famous economist of our era, Milton Friedman. Friedman believed in a radical vision of society in which profit and the market drive every aspect of life, from schools to healthcare, even the army. He called for abolishing all trade protections, deregulating all prices, and eviscerating government services. These ideas have always been tremendously unpopular, and understandably so. They cause waves of unemployment, send prices soaring, and make life more precarious for millions. Unable to advance their agenda democratically, Friedman and his disciples were drawn to the power of shock. The subject should be rudely awakened and immediately blindfolded and handcuffed. When arrested at this time, most subjects experience intense feelings of shock, insecurity, and psychological stress. The idea is to prevent the subject from relaxing and recovering from shock. Friedman understood that just as prisoners are softened up for interrogation by the shock of their capture, massive disasters could serve to soften us up for his radical free market crusade. He advised politicians that immediately after a crisis, they should push through all the painful policies at once before people could regain their footing. He called this method economic shock treatment. I call it the shock doctrine. Take a second look at the iconic events of our era, and behind many, you will find its logic at work. This is the secret history of the free market. It wasn't born in freedom and democracy. It was born in shock.
Isolation, both physical and psychological, must be maintained from the moment of apprehension. The capacity for resistance is diminished by disorientation. Prisoners should maintain silence at all times. They should never be allowed to speak to each other. There's one other thing I've learned from my study of states of shock. Shock wears off. It is by definition a temporary state. And the best way to stay oriented, to resist shock, is to know what is happening to you and why.